So now we need to name some uh, complex ions and coordination compounds. So the rules start off very similar to what we did with ionic compounds, just plain old ionic compounds. You name the cation first as the first word and then the anion second as the second word. Works the same way here. So if you end up having a neutral complex though, so technically you don't have to have charges, uh, you've got that neutral one, you just got a single word. You won't have a cation and anion, obviously. Uh, in this case, the first two examples, we've got a complex cation, cation only. Second example, we've got a complex anion, anion only. In the third and fourth cases, though, I took those complex ions and then made them part of full coordination compounds where there's both a cation and an anion. And then finally, I've got an example with a polyatomic ion here. Last but not least, we've got a formula given. I'm sorry, we've got a name given. We've got to come up with the formula. So rules two through four here are going to be specific to complex ions. So we're going to name the ligands first. We'll name them in alphabetical order. We'll use Latin numerical prefixes listed there to tell how many of them there are. So one hint here given is any negatively charged ligands will end with the letter O in how we name them. So it turns out the ligands all have special names. Uh, we put them in complex compounds. So we'll find out water's aqua and ammonia's amine. So and the halogens are all fluorochlorobromoiodo, ending with O, so they're negatively charged, so on and so forth. Finally, after that, we'll name the metal. If it's part of a cation or neutral species, we just name the metal as in English. We'll find out though with a complex anion, we have to add this A-T-E ending. And if that wasn't a pain enough of, as well, any of these lovely metals where the symbol doesn't seem to correspond to the English word, but to a Latin root, you actually use that Latin root with an A-T-E ending instead. So kind of a pain in the butt. So like ferrate for iron, cuprate for copper, argentate for silver, orate for gold, plumbate for lead, and stannate for tin. Finally, last thing you give is the oxidation state of that central metal in parentheses. So let's see how this plays out here with this first example. I mean, we're gonna need some space here. These tend to be pretty long words, oftentimes. All right, so here we've got just a complex cation, and we're gonna name all the ligands first, and you name them in alphabetical order. So it turns out amine comes first, and we've got three of them, so we have to say try amine. So water comes next, it's named as aqua, and that's the alphabetical order is based on the name in the compound. And there's two of those, so that's gonna be di aqua. And then finally chloro, when there's only one, you don't say mono, you just simply give the name of the ligand. So chloro, and then finally we'll say the name of the metal, so chromium, if I can spell chromium correctly. So chromium, and then finally you give the oxidation state of the metal in parentheses. Uh, in this case, water and ammonia are both neutral species. Uh, there's one chloroligand that's negative one. The overall complex is a plus two charge, so chromium must be plus three. And that goes there. And if you have just a cation or just an anion, you end it with ion. So this is the triamine diaqua chlorochromium three ion. Cool, next example. just a complex anion. So, and in this case, we'll name the ligands first. There's only one, so it makes this a little easier. There's four of them. We say tetra, and they're chloroligands, so tetra chloro. And this is one of those ones. So again, with a complex anion, so you gotta end the metal name with A-T-E, and if it's one of the funky ones where the symbol seems to go with a Latin root rather than the English word, you gotta use that Latin root, and for gold, that's or. So this is tetra chloro orate. So, and in this case, we can see that uh, there are four chloroligands that are minus one each. So to end up with an overall charge of negative two, gold must be in the plus two oxidation state. And since it's just an ion, not an entire coordination compound, we'll end it with ion. So this is the tetrachloroorate two ion. All right, the next example. If you notice, this is now a coordination compound, but the complex cation is the same one we had at the beginning. And so I'm gonna copy that over here because we named the cation first, and that is the triamine diaqua chlorochromium three ion. But as part of a coordination compound, we don't say ion, only when it's just the cation or just the anion. So, and then we'll name the anion here. And so even though we gotta say how many of each ligand inside the coordination sphere there are, for normal ionic nomenclature, you don't say how many of each ion there are, we're just simply gonna say chloride. So notice whether I have NaCl with a single chloride, we say sodium chloride, or MgCl2, we'd say magnesium chloride, we wouldn't say magnesium dichloride. So same case here, when you're just naming one of the counter ions, you don't give any sort of numerical prefix to describe how many there are. So in the next example, uh, we've got a complex anion, it's the same one we had above here, that was the tetrachloroorate 2 ion, so I'm going to copy that down. So, but to start it off, we've to name the cation first, and the cation is just simply sodium, 
And again, you don't say how many of each ion there are in typical anic nomenclature, so we won't say disodium or anything here. And then we'll name the complex anion, which again was the tetrachloroborate 2 ion. So, but again, we take off and omit that word ion when it's part of an overall coordination compound. So this is simply sodium tetrachloroborate 2. All right, next example. This one's got a bidentate ligand, ethylene diamine. When you've got the bidentate ligands, you're actually going to start using some of these lovely Greek numerical prefixes instead. So it turns out that EN stands for ethylene diamine, and since ethylene diamine already has a Latin prefix in it as well, for that reason we'd also want to use these Greek prefixes uh, for the numerical roots. Uh, so whether it's polydentate ligand or whether it has like a di or a tri in it already, for those you always put this. So for two reasons we're going to use the Greek prefixes instead of the Latin numerical prefixes uh, in this example. And so in this case, we start off by naming the ligands. So we got three ethylene diamines, so that's going to be tris, not tri, ethylene whoop, diamine. Notice this is tricky. Amine as a ligand, just plain old ammonia. Amine has two M's, but in ethylene diamine, it's just got a single M here. So tris ethylene diamine, and then we name the metal. It's part of a cation, so we just give its English name iron here. Uh, and in this case, ethylene diamine is a neutral species, does not end with the letter O, so you can infer that it doesn't have a negative charge. Uh, and therefore, if the entire complex is a plus two charge, it's because the iron must be plus two. And so this is tris ethylene diamine iron two ion. Finally, in the last example here, we're given the name this time, and we have to come up with a formula. And so in this case, we've got hexaamine nickel two. So nickel is the metal. That's first in the formula, although last in the name. And then hexaamine means there are three, I'm sorry, there are six amine ligands. And they're telling us it's nickel with a plus two oxidation state. So if amine's neutral and nickel's plus two, this whole thing has a plus two charge. So then we go to hexacyanoferrate two. So we have a complex cation. Now we also have a complex anion. So we're really being stretched here a little bit. So ferrate, iron, is the central metal ion, and hexacyano, there are six cyano ligands, and here we're told that iron's in the plus two oxidation state. Cyano ligands are all minus one, so overall this guy has a negative four charge. And so we can figure out that in the proper formula, I'm gonna need two of these cations to match one of these anions. And so we'd put the two right here, and in the final overall formula, we wouldn't have to really have the individual charges listed. And this would be the formula of hexaamine nickel 2 hexacyanoferrate 2. Good times. Uh, this definitely takes some practice. Work a number of examples. Really get these down. It's very systematic. These are easy questions if you know all the rules. Obviously, it's a pain in the butt learning these rules. But take the time. Well worth it.